Thank you for tuning in to 94.7 KPIP, Fayette's local radio station. My name is Patricia Fisher, and I'm here at the Ashby Hodge Gallery of American Art on the CMU campus with another Local Voices interview with Sarah Chestnut. Sarah is the youngest child of Winky Chestnut Friedrichs, and I want to say thank you for taking the time uh, while you're here in town to spend some time with us to, to share with our listeners more information about your mother and the wonderful artwork uh, exhibited here on campus. It's my pleasure. Thank you. For those of our listeners who don't know who your mother is, uh, Winky Chestnut Friedrichs was a talented artist, as we can see from all the examples of the uh, wonderful art on the walls. But she was also a local historian. She was a tour guide well into her 90s. She was a passionate genealogist, a prolific author and mapper of her world, as well as a devoted mother and wife. Sarah, we'd like to start just listening to you talk a little bit about what it was like growing up with this woman who seems to have been such a force of nature. <laughs> well, it, it was really, really fun. <laughs> kind of like having a manic person around your house, always making something out of something and always having a big plan underway. And she had so many friends that would call on her and she just wanted to contribute to her community as best she could. My first memory of her painting was when she was painting sets for a local theater group. And she brought me along because I was too, too young to go to school and she handed me a paintbrush so that I could help her, but I painted my shoes instead. <laughs> but anyway, it was all around. She was working on the dining room table with her works, and mm -hmm. she had an easel set up by the window and so forth. Mm -hmm. And she put on art programs for the school children, and really, whenever there was a way to make money for a group, she would contribute her artwork. I remember her making fans out of palmetto leaves, for instance. And even here in Boonville, she did coffee mug designs and plates and things to raise money for the bridge, for instance. There's a mug with Boonville, the old Boonville Bridge on it. Mm -hmm. So she, she just loved to share her talent. She was very engaged, an yes. engaged artist. Yes. Do you recall how old you were when you first remember watching your mother paint? I was probably five or six, I think, and watching her sketch lettering for a sign. She did a lot of commercial art as well, so she did signage for galleries and boutiques that were hand-painted, and watching her do that lettering was just enchanting, and that's probably why I'm a graphic designer today, was just being fascinated with letter forms and her genius at drawing. Mm -hmm. Can you talk a little bit about how your mother looked at her own art? Well, she was a commercial art artist first and foremost because it was a way to make a living. And uh, she would paint people's houses. It was kind of a thing to have a painting of your house. So she would get commissioned to uh, sit in their driveway and in the back of the van and paint someone's house and they'd hang it on their wall. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, portraits of people as well. And uh, so the commercial things did make money. She did fashion illustration, actually, when she was very young, just out of college. She was mostly known for her copper art, though. Mm -hmm. If you look around the gallery, you'll see several examples. And she did them throughout her career, off and on. Uh -huh. and very time-consuming process and very unique mm -hmm. and tended to have a religious theme. So she lived in Louisiana and here in rural Missouri. So where people tend to go to church and they appreciated it. Mm -hmm. So she kept doing it. Mm -hmm. There were some other phases. For instance, if you see this southwestern mm -hmm. large acrylic one, that was when she took a trip out to Santa Fe and was just blown away by the sky mm -hmm. after she'd been living in you know, Louisiana where it's very closed in with vegetation and trees. Mm -hmm. So she had a show just based on that, and that's the last one left, actually. Oh, okay. And they're all very open and beautiful. Mm -hmm and different. Mm -hmm. Was Georgia O'Keeffe, uh, did she have influence with your mother? Oh yes, uh -huh. yes. And uh -huh. we got to go to the O'Keeffe Gallery in Santa Fe. And, uh -huh. yeah, she was inspired. Interesting you see that connection, but yes. Mm -hmm. The openness. I think so. It just thrilled her. Mm -hmm. And then she moved to Missouri, mm -hmm. and you can see some very local things, these grain bins are mm -hmm. wonderful, I think. Mm -hmm. Everybody working. loves to have the grain bins, mm -hmm. I think, yeah. if you're from the Midwest. And these lovely portraits of her mother at the window, 
and the portrait of you as a young girl and is this one here with the family is that personal biographical that is her holding the child and apparently I'm in her belly <laughs> oh wow what a lovely and that's my brother mm -hmm. I don't know who the man on the horse is but I do have the photo that that was based on actually she got inspired by that she didn't normally work from photographs but interesting that she mostly painted women sitting right as mm -hmm. you can see here she didn't do that many portraits of men now that I think about it mm -hmm. but there's two of her mother one of me mm -hmm. and one of this group of ladies that's in the one that mm -hmm. hangs at the Frederick I guess we really want to encourage uh, our local listeners to come into the Ashby Hodge Gallery and appreciate all this wonderful art. Sarah, what do you want people coming in to know about your mother? She really, really dug into her community and really wanted to know why things were the way they were. Wanted, loved people, loved everyone she met. And I think she really wanted people to know what they had, what beauty they were passing by every day to make sure that that was preserved and noticed, such as the grain bins. And she had a passion for painting historic homes and sketching historic homes. There's not that many of those here, but that was one of her things, is preserving architecture, old architecture. Mm -hmm. Even if the building wouldn't last, maybe the painting would. Mm -hmm. so and, for, and for those listeners who might not know, there, there's a day trip well worth your time by driving into Cooper County to see Pleasant Green, where there is some additional artwork that uh, your mother did. Oh there, yes, the house the is Green. filled. I mean, we just, I grabbed about a dozen paintings for the gallery here, but there's, there's more. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the house itself is really a work of art because it was, it was falling to pieces and being used to store hay. And, and then she gave all these tours and it's really decorated to the last detail at this point and we hope to maintain it. Mm -hmm. And maybe even have a little gallery on, on the premises for local artists. Mm -hmm. I think she would love that. That would be a beautiful legacy. Yes, yes. She really wanted other artists to create and to keep creating and to keep being inspired. Mm -hmm. She couldn't see something beautiful and just let it go. She had to get it down on paper or on canvas, mm -hmm. even if it was something she passed every day. She saw beauty in everything mm -hmm. and everyone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she was an exceptional human being. And uh, was a, I had the wonderful opportunity to get to know her a little bit and conduct some uh, interviews with her uh, that go more into more detail about other aspects of her life. And she was very shy of talking about her art in these conversations. So it's really wonderful that we have this opportunity to get your insights into your mother as a working artist. And I want to thank you again for making the time in your busy schedule. And I encourage everybody in uh, the local area to come by to the Ashby Hodge Gallery of American Art to see the work of an incredible American artist, Winky Chestnut Friedrichs. Thanks again for tuning in to 94.7 KPIP, Fayette, Missouri.